Hello, my name is Chris Curran, and this is the lecture on internal validity. In this lecture, we'll be talking about the concept of correlation and causation, and thinking about ways in which we can move from one to the other. So let's jump right in. You've probably heard the phrase before that correlation is not causation. But what exactly does this term mean? Well, first we'll talk about the idea of correlation. And correlation simply means that there is a relationship between two variables. So in empirical data, a correlation exists when a variable such as A is higher, another variable such as B is systematically higher or perhaps systematically lower. So a correlation simply says that there is a relationship between two variables. As one changes, we see a relationship with the other variable. That variable changes as well. What correlation doesn't tell us, however, is whether the change in one of these variables is actually causing the change in the other variable. So we often use sort of the silly example of the relationship between the cost of your car and the academic achievement of your child. So it's probably an empirical fact that people with more expensive cars have students or children who achieve higher academically. In other words, there's a relationship between the price of your car and the academic achievement of your student. There's a correlation. We'd be hesitant, however, to think that this relationship is causal. After all, it doesn't make a lot of sense to say that owning or buying an expensive car causes your child to somehow achieve higher in school. It's likely that this relationship is explained by other third omitted variables. So perhaps parents who are able to afford a more expensive car are the type of parents who have higher income levels. They may also be the type of parents who have higher education levels. And those same parents may be the type of parents that make differential investments in their child's education. Maybe they're also able to afford to live in a school district with a better school, or they're able to afford tutoring for their child. So it could be that these third omitted variables, such as income and parental education, actually explain the two variables of interest and the relationship between them. In other words, we end up with a correlation even when there's not causation. So causation, then, is just sort of the, the step beyond, beyond correlation. Causation says that variable A actually causes variable B. And what this means is that if we can somehow increase A, we will see, then, an increase in B, or perhaps a decrease if the relationship is negative. So causation would be an example like, say, preschool. If we think that going to preschool actually influences your academic achievement, makes you achieve higher, then we may be able to show that there's a causal relationship between preschool attendance and academic achievement, which at least from the beginning we could say is probably more theoretically defensible, defensible than a relationship between the price of your car and your student's academic achievement. The key thing to grab here, however, is that correlation is not causation. And this is something that trained people know in principle but frequently mistake in practice. And our jobs is to be very savvy to think about this relationship and recognize when evidence is simply relational in nature rather than causal in nature. So let's quickly think through some of the requirements for causation. The first requirement is time order, or the temporal requirement. And this just says that cause must precede the effect. In other words, if variable A causes variable B, then variable A has to happen before variable B. If we think about the case of preschool, we could imagine thinking about the causal effect of preschool on kindergarten academic achievement. And notice here that the cause, preschool attendance, happens before the effect, kindergarten achievement. And in fact, it would be sort of strange to try to tell the story in the opposite direction. It would be hard to explain how your kindergarten achievement could go back in time to have an effect on whether you attend preschool. So time order just says A must precede B. The cause must precede the effect. The second requirement for causation is that of covariation. And this requirement just simply says that there must be some raw relationship between A and B for which we can explain or attribute causality. So in other words, this is sort of a requirement that says there must be a correlation between the two variables A and B if we're going to then try to think or make a case for causation. Now technically this may not always be true. We could imagine some cases where there might not be a correlation even if there is a causal effect. But by and large, this will be a, a truism. 
So it simply says that if we're going to think about the relationship between preschool attendance and academic achievement in kindergarten as causal, we at the very least should probably expect to see a correlation. That correlation doesn't imply causation, but it is one of the necessary and foundational um, things that we would look for to begin thinking about causation. The third requirement is that this relationship is not spurious. In other words, there is no other explanation for the relationship between variables A and B other than the causal relationship of A causing B. In research terms, this would be to say that there is no omitted variable that explains the relationship. So as we thought about the sort of silly example of car price and academic achievement, we could see in that example that there were very other reliable explanations, such as that of parental education or parental income. If we're looking to establish causation, we have to find a situation in which we can remove those other explanations. We can say that the only reason that there is a relationship between A and B is because A is causing B. And we'll think more about ways in which to go about doing this and ways in which research designs can help establish the non-spuriousness of a relationship. So these are our three requirements, time order, covariation, and a non-spurious relationship. If you can design a study that can prove all three of these, you can make a strong case for causality. Now, before we leave this concept, let's introduce one term that we can use to describe the degree to which a study accomplishes this. And that's the idea of internal validity. You may be familiar from previous lectures on the idea of external validity. And if you recall, external validity was just the idea of about the way in which a study can be generalized. So it gave us some indication of the degree to which the findings of a study could apply to other situations, other groups, other times. Internal validity, in contrast, refers to the degree to which a study provides a plausibly causal estimate. So a study with high internal validity is one that provides strong evidence for a causal claim. In contrast, a study with low internal validity is one that does not provide strong evidence for a causal claim. So a purely descriptive study has low internal validity. It's not able to say that the relationship between A and B is a causal effect, A is causing B. Whereas a study with high internal validity is able to say through its research design that A is very likely the cause of B. So we'll continue to use terms like external and internal validity to describe these aspects of studies. Quick summary, we've talked about causation and the way in which it differs from correlation. We saw three requirements of causation, time order, a relationship, and non-spuriousness. And we've applied this term of internal validity to think about the degree to which an individual study gives us evidence of causation. Hopefully this gives you a good foundation to think through the concept of causation and begin to consider studies that attempt to estimate causal effects. In other videos and other lectures, we'll dive into this concept in more depth and explore some of the actual methodological ways in which we can go about establishing causation. So I hope this video provides you a nice foundation as we think about these concepts, and I look forward to you joining 